All right, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. This is a, an amazing panel of incredible business leaders from all around the world representing the B Corp movement. Uh, we're here today in honor of B Corp Month, which is our global annual celebration of what it means to be a B Corp. And this year, we're really focused on what makes a B Corp a better business. So you'll get to hear all about what these uh, incredible leaders and incredible businesses um, are doing, what makes them a better business, why they join the B Corp movement. Um, and yeah, we'll be adding in some other questions later. I'm Shazi Vestram. I'm the founder of Happy Family Organics. We are an organic baby food company that's now um, the second largest baby food company in the United States and the number one organic brand. Um, and we're really focused on creating healthy uh, options for our babies. And then I um, sold and left that business and started a new one called Healthy Nest. Um, and we launched in April of 2020, which is a really fun time to launch. And Healthy Nest is about creating a truly um, supportive and enriching and safe environment for baby in terms of developmental health and well-being. Thanks, Shazi. Fernanda, can I turn it over to you? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'm Fernanda. I am uh, from 100% Amazonia. So we started uh, 12 years ago as a trading company. So the idea when we came to the Amazon was to uh, empower the local companies, local industries to produce uh, and to work with a supply chain that we would create, supply chain uh, from resources of uh, the forest, it could be a fruit, could be leaves, could be anything that can be transformed into some healthy raw materials. And uh, we have been doing this for quite some time until we decided to make uh, our own industry, which is uh, um, will be uh, open and will be running now in May, uh, so that we can actually be more effective in our mission, which is basically to keep the forest standing. So we are fighting deforestation uh, in a way that we we. Uh, Let's say like that, we put a price tag in the standing forest. So what it means, if someone has an area which with forests, uh, they, people need to know that this, uh, this is actually can bring income to the people. Because in Brazil, most of the areas here in our region, uh, people try to deforest and put cattle. They think if they put cattle, they will have a better income. So we are trying to be the alternative. So it's not us only. You're gonna say, we're going to see uh, the slogan, what we created. And the idea is pretty much this. We, we have now a product line with 50 different products from 25 different botanical species. We do not work with any type of animal. That's not us. We are vegetarians and vegans here. And uh, so this is what we created. And now we export to 65 countries. So this year we're going to start selling in Brazil for the first time. And so this is us here. And we are located at the Delta of the Amazon in a city called Belém. Great, thank you. Virginia, can I turn it over to you? Yes, of course. Hi everyone, my name is Virginia and I'm the CEO of uh, Doper. So you probably uh, know Doper. Um, and our, we have a mission, Doper, and it's to empower people to choose reusable or single-use water bottles uh, with this goal to uh, protect our world water sources. And we have a vision uh, this is a, to live in a world where everyone near and far has access to safe drinking water. And we do it, uh, we want to be a system changer. We do it via education, awareness uh, campaigns and programs. And we do it also by having the perfect alternative for the mineral water bottle. So it's our, our product that we uh, sell as a tool to reach the bigger mission that, uh, that we have. And I'm here in the Netherlands. Thank you. Um, Cress, can I turn it over to you? Hi, my name's uh, Cressy. I'm the co-founder of Elvis and Cressy. I'm in rural England. Um, and it's amazing that it's sunny today <laughs> because it rains here most of the time. Um, 
we do three things in our business. We rescue materials, we transform them into beautiful things, and then we donate 50% of the profit to charity. We started by rescuing all of London's decommissioned fire hoses, which we turn into um, some of the bags you see behind me. Um, and we donate 50% of the profits to the firefighters charity. We started in 2005 um, and we were in the first group of B Corps in the UK um, because I suppose we were a B Corp before there was a B Corp movement. It's always the way, the way we were structured as a business. And what we love the most is coming together to join a community of like-minded businesses, because that's where, to me, the real change is going to come from, is when we all collaborate, work together, and prove that there is a much better way to run a business. Thank you, Cressy, and apologies for mispronouncing your name. Um, and Sri, can I go, turn it over to you? And hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. You got it. Thanks, Hannah. Uh, hello, everyone. It looks like I'm the odd man out here on the panel. Such an honor and privilege to be here. Uh, I'm the co-founder of a social enterprise by name Kusa Dot One. Uh, I started this along with my wife. We both have been serial and social entrepreneurs for the past 21 years. This is our second enterprise, and live and operate out of Nairobi, Kenya. As Kusa, we are part of the founding class of B Corps on the continent. And as uh, Chris said, uh, we've, we've actually started off with a very simple ethos that uh, we are here to support and assist people from informal communities, those who are earning $2 to $3 per day. We support them to learn, connect, and grow at scale. We do this by building their individual capacities, helping them tap into their true potential. We bring them into communities and help them to converge their resources, what they have, and collectively do what they do. And we scale it at a regional and national level. To date, we have impacted over 6.2 million people and have managed to create over 150,000 new jobs. And we work within agriculture. Uh, so agriculture is something that we started four years ago, but otherwise we've done very many things across health, water, sanitation, hygiene, and all of them. But then we realized that majority of the people in developing countries are agrarian. They come from agrarian background, so we might as well do something there. We go into the remote villages. We identify youth who are enterprising in nature, set them up as independent entrepreneurs, we put them through something called a youth ready program, rural entrepreneurship for development incubators. We give them a very interesting backpack. Let me see, uh, during the course of this conversation, I'll share the backpack with you all. That, that has the entire uh, stuff that they need to be able to engage about 200 farmers each. They provide free advisory and information service to the farmers because most of them don't know what they don't know. And then we, connect them to the marketplace solution by bringing in the right quality inputs, right amount of uh, herbicides, organic chemicals, or any, anything like that that they need as inputs, organized for credit and organized for markets. This is what we do. You know, to me being a B Corp, it's almost like, it's sort of table stakes if you enter into the world of business to make a difference. And it's really um, wonderful to have been around to see the community coming together to say, let's codify how we do it. And I think um, like many of us here, um, I think you, know, you start your business and you have all of these ideals and you recognize that, well, now there is a community of like-minded individuals with a roadmap, best practices and honestly, someone to hold you accountable. And I think um, I think it's one thing when, when we're small and growing, um, and it's another thing when your business takes on this life of its own and you want it to be able to go out into the world and represent your purest and most, um, you know, your, your most idealistic intentions. And I think that for, for me, um, when Happy Family became a B Corp, I think it was 2010, um, so it was way back when I, we were one of the earlies. And uh, for me, it was at the time, I was like, well, we act like a B Corp. We are a B Corp, but let's do this. Um, let's do this so we can really show people that from not just from a governance standpoint, but from a consumer standpoint, consumers can start choosing what they believe in. 
And over the years, what I've seen um, is that consumers now really understand that if you're buying from a B Corp, you're really buying from um, a company or a group of people who actually care about what they do. Um, and that to me is, has become this really beautiful market shift. And so for my second company, Healthy Nest, which is really all about bringing um, a truly safe environment to everything that a baby touches, because I believe that everything in baby's environment really affects who they uh, become and their brain and their health and their well-being. And, um, and I, I, again, wanted to be a B Corp as a startup because I feel like it just sets the team, you know, on this true north. And, um, you know, I'll also say that having, having the B Corp certification kind of from the get-go really aligns us. I mean, we start every meeting talking about our mission, um, but it's always there. Like the B is always there. And um, it means a lot, especially during times when many of us have been struggling with so many things. Um, and I know we all on this panel have had some challenges this past year. And I know we are all probably optimists who try to make the most, but sometimes life is really hard. And there's something about knowing, uh, especially for new folks to the team or new folks to this like beautiful workforce who want to come in and make a difference in life. There's something about knowing that when you go to work, you're doing something good. And to me, the B stands for that. And, uh, you know, any business I ever start, not that I want to start another one anytime soon, is always going to be a B Corp. And any business I invest in, I suggest they become a B Corp. And um, it's just become a way of life to me that it, it feels like a personal constitution of how I wish all businesses were run. You know, to me, I think the most important, just like Cressy said, yeah, we had uh, this vision even before being certified a B Corporation. So we were a B Corporation when I came to the Amazon and, and I actually came here before opening 100% Amazon. I was hired by a US company who was looking for a supply chain, a good supply chain of acai at that time. And I had three years uh, walking around and seeing all types of communities and facilities and the lack of uh, engagements and not really, people would not really realize they are located in one of the most, one of the richest places in the world in terms of social, social, social biodiversity. So when we opened the company, it was because we wanted to show uh, people, this is the best place to be and there's a lot of things to do here. So it was actually my personal need to make a difference. So when, uh, when uh, the certification showed up to us, and this was in 2017, 2018, so we received that, uh, that questionnaire. And it was the first time that we started really to measuring our impact because we didn't even know how to do it. So we had the dream, we had the wish to make a difference, but to really make a difference, you need to measure. You need to measure, like, just like Siri said, you know, he, he, he gave numbers here, he gave figures, this, that, and that. And until that, we didn't really know what we were doing until we started measuring. And by measuring, we, uh, we basically, we, we started uh, checking the impact. I don't know how it was by, uh, for you, but we didn't really started this way just a wish and and of course uh, the the dream but without measuring maybe we cannot say that we are b corps now i can because i have the figures so that makes a difference for us i think i, th I think for me also there's there's the just the, the rational element you know i think that b corps have essentially w won the argument and that's because it's it's very difficult. I was in a room with about 800 people and I said, is there anyone who's willing to argue that a business should be allowed to exploit people or exploit the environment for profit? And, and no one no one put their hand up, you know? And yet that is that is the structure that underpins the vast majority of capitalism. You know, that's why, that's why we have uh, the problems that we have. Whereas within the B Corp space, and to me, the, you know, the most important thing is the legal change that companies do to say that shareholders are, you know, are not more important than the people or the planet. 
and it's a rational thing to say it's it's completely logical and that's why i think it you know i think that people see us maybe as a vanguard of businesses actually now but really i think we're just the most rational ones i think on one side is of course the insights part so to get a lot of insights on uh, your organization to be part of the community that's important but what i was thinking when we're, i was listening is like it's not only the awareness part that we want to create so other ones will follow um, but what brings me is a lot of hope. So when I am part of the community and I see all those kind of great initiatives, it gives me the idea that it's going to happen and that every time that the B Corp community is getting bigger, then I think, okay, we can, it's going to happen what we want, it's going to happen. And we have these positions as front runners, so we have to tell our stories. Uh, so I think this is very important. And so in, it gives me hope but it gives me all the action. So all those organizations are doing something. So they are not talking, talking. Uh, they are doing something. And what I think is um, for me, the biggest word where I am using lately, because I think we are not change makers anymore. I think we are future shapers. And I think we have to take this responsibility that we have because we know already that you can do better. You, we know already that you can use the business as a force of for good. We are doing it. We have to tell the story so everyone will think, okay, purpose and profit can go together. You can have a bigger goal than only the, the profit. So I feel by being part of the community, also a responsibility to tell the story as a front runner. You know, for me, being a B Corp makes doing business just feel much more personal. And uh, to me, B Corps are a badge for not just better, but a better future that we can all track and improve upon together in a way that has really never existed. I mean, the level of collaboration um, coupled with you know, a purity of purpose around using our collective businesses to make this world the place that we want our children to grow up in is very special and um you know i i think being a b corp should be table stakes for any new business um that launches because it basically shows that from an intention standpoint we are not just here um you know to create financial abundance we are here to create social abundance and one of the things i love most about the b corp community is that the topics every year reflect what's happening from a progressive business mindset that might still be coming to the fore for some other, um, some areas, whereas, you know, it's put placed in front of you saying, okay, we are focusing on social justice. We are focusing on, you know, inclusion and diversity in the workplace, but using these best practices. And it's really, sometimes, I mean, we all have the very best of intentions, but sometimes being given a roadmap by those who've really thought it through. Um, not that we can't challenge, we can challenge and work together to improve it. I find that giving a roadmap can be really comforting when I know my guide is someone that I really trust. And I feel like that um, that is is part and parcel of, uh, of being a B Corp. I've been, uh, as I said, I've been a serial social entrepreneur for over 21 plus years. For almost, two decades, I always struggled with this thought that, you know, you have this public sector, you have this private sector, you have this nonprofit sector. Is there a fourth sector there? A fourth sector, which actually, see the kind of work that I do, a lot of people say, hey, you are doing the work of the government. I'm like, okay. Yeah. And sometimes uh, people say, hey, you are, are you a nonprofit? So we seem to be doing the work of almost everybody, but we don't belong to a, a, a category, if I may call so. So I always wondered, and let me share a very personal story. In fact, Kuza won the UN SDG Innovation Challenge in 2017. And I was fortunate to, to be there at the UN General Assembly and I shared my story there. And as part of the audience after the talk, somebody came to me and she's part of the B Corp leadership team, I think. Uh, she said, are you a B Corp? I said, no, 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 no. We are a social enterprise. I'm trying to put a phrase to it. 
She said, no, 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 you are a B Corp. And she kept saying that like three, four, five, six times. I said, can you tell me what is this B Corp? And that's when I really understood. And that was my aha moment. I said, now I got the answer to my big question, which kept me awake for so many days and nights. And I believe that the B Corp moment is the one that actually fits that category, which is uh, companies profit with purpose. I mean, they both can go hand in hand. We don't necessarily need to compromise something for the other. And way back, we've actually defined for ourselves as to what are the core drivers, uh, the guiding principles with which we drive our business. As I said, our focus has always been informal communities. And we said, these are the people who are the frontline people. Uh, unfortunately, COVID made us all realize and recognize how important they are. We said, we are empowering the people who are powering our planet. Now, if that is what we are doing, what are the core guiding principles? Number one, in agriculture, we said it has to be farmer first and not profit first. Second, and uh, I think, uh, was it Chris uh, who shared that abundance uh, thought? We said there's enough and more abundance. Uh, we don't necessarily need to live in this like, uh, world of scarcity. So abundance over scarcity. And then uh, a shared value or I, me, myself. It's all about I, me, myself, how much I can grab, what I can do, the capitalist thinking to a shared value thinking. And I believe, personally believe that there is absolutely no competition out there and we can cooperate and compete and have cooperation than competition. And if we can drive these principles around any collaborations that we are all, uh, we are a very small community, a very small uh, group of people, like-minded people. And I feel that I almost know each of you like, for years, it's just that in, intimacy, you know, instant intimacy with which you can connect to any of the B Corp member anywhere in the world and you see that sparkle in their eye and their appreciation for everything that others are doing. And that's really what I, I see as part of this small family which is growing. <music>
it's so interesting because to me it's like the collaboration brings more and more people into the movement and i think it sounds like a lot of us are like startup folks and we you know you like kind of fight the good fight every day and you have big dreams and a big heart and then at some point the business gets so big that i mean it, and it has with happy family which i'm really proud of um because it means to it means that we're fulfilling my original mission was to really change the way children are fed in our country um, and remove pesticides and toxins, you know, from the soil and their bodies. But then you get so big and you want to, I think part, part of the collaboration with B Corp is also bringing in the bigger guys to change the way systemically how they operate. And um, one example, which, which I use um, just because it was my life for so many years as we became a B Corp. And then in 2013, I sold the majority um, shares of Happy Family to Group Danone. And, um, you know, I did it for very personal reasons. My son was diagnosed with autism and I, I grew up with very little and um, I was very scared that we wouldn't have in my family the resources to help my son. And, um, and so, you know, I sold the business and, um, and I stayed on for many years. Um, but the, the thing about Danone and the reason I chose them um, was that they, they made promises to me about how to keep the legacy of what I had built, which really is a family business um, going. And so we were this tiny little organic baby food brand in this 50, I don't know, 50 billion Euro juggernaut. And so, you know, the, to me, the other part of the movement is, you know, we share amongst each other um, and we learn and we get better and we collaborate and we have better ideas. And then the opportunity to take that even bigger um, to scale is kind of exciting because then all of a sudden you have a corporation with 100,000 employees who's uh, being held accountable. And it's not just you and your team who, of course, you know, they're like your family. We're all like brothers and sisters here. But it's one thing when it's when it's 150,000 people. Um, and I think you know, I think that's the power of the movement is that when when consumers know more about what the B stands for, um, that enables us to attract even the bigger players into our community and accept the challenge of rising up. Um, so that that's been one way that I've kind of um, you know, worked within B Corp is to use it to inspire, um, inspire those that you would have originally thought as your, you know, kind of big, scary competition, bring them in, or do it the way we do it. Um, see how good that feels. And, uh, and I, I think it's a good strategy, just in general in life, but um, it's that has has been something that I, I'm proud of. I mean, Yes, we do. We have obviously uh, we have a, a discount for everyone within the B Corp community. We do collaborations with seven or eight different B Corps that's actively happening right now. We design products for other B Corps. Um, but equally, you know, we we have a we have a big space because when you collect space, when you collect waste, you need lots of room. And just before lockdown, we had a, a B Corp leaders retreat here. So we had about 15 different B Corp CEOs, big and small. Um, so, you know, the head of Innocent Smoothies, but also the Guardian newspaper and, and, and then a small uh, boutique uh, eco tea company. And the whole idea behind that was what, what are we working on? How are we building the movement? But also, how are we allowing the time that we spend within the movement to also let us achieve that blue sky thinking that you're talking about, which is, I think, sometimes really hard. Again, for us, we're relatively small, but I still get to be a part of things like a net zero by 2030 campaign. And not only that, but I've got two B Corps that have dedicated teams who've written the guidebook on it, who are basically, you've given me the roadmap in order to achieve it. And that's what to me is the most amazing thing about the, the movement is that big or small, there doesn't seem to be uh, this ego issue that you get in traditional businesses where they kind of judge each other based on their market capitalization. In B Corps, it seems to be that everybody just wants to transparently and openly help everyone else to improve and then as as we we've, we've all been saying tackle some of these wider societal issues like um climate change like black lives matter i think this is this is fascinating that you you brought brought up autism because we we are seeing something similar in the uk we hire apprentices 
um, from local schools and they, there's particularly an increase in, in people with ADHD and, and, um, and being on the autistic spectrum. And one of the things that we found in our workshop is that because people who are in our craft team are actively working their hands and their mind, that actually it really sort of steadies them, helps them to be to to express their true creativity. Whereas if they were just at a desk job, like at a laptop, it would it would be really almost traumatic for them. But we, you know, we as an as an individual business leader, I can't tackle these problems. But I feel that with, within the movement, I can be a part of tackling these problems. And that's where I suppose that's where I really take enormous amounts of inspiration from it. And when I'm inspired, then I get up earlier, I do more, you know, and that's where the, that's where the impact comes from. Will, so, you, yeah. guys make, um, will you guys make diaper bags for us? <laughs> and help you know us in getting if people to it, diapers. I don't, have, I don't have kids. So we've been asked so many times to do a diaper bag and Elvis and I don't have kids. So we've never designed one because we do not want to get it wrong. So if someone will give us, the perfect, if someone will give us a perfect shape, we will make one. I, I have some ideas there. <laughs> I'm sure you do. You should definitely speak after that some business, you know, business speaking, because this is what we are here. We have, uh, I have signed a declaration of interdep interdependence, and this is interdependence. If I can help somehow, someone, and if you have a need and you, ha you can offer, or at least if you cannot offer directly, you know who can. This is, this is what we are about. And it's wonderful. It's a nice feeling. So we need to interact more with Africa. <laughs> yeah, so speak, speaking about collaboration, uh, I don't know if you all heard of an organization called Entrepreneurs Organization. It's called eonetwork.org. So, so Entrepreneurs Organization is the most influential community of entrepreneurs. It's entrepreneurs only members minimum revenue size is a million dollar and average company size is about 50 million dollar currently over 14000 businesses across 65 plus countries i've been a member leader within the organization i've been a member for 16 years now and when i came to africa so i've been living on the continent only for the past 10 years so i i i actually had no i mean no contact on the continent i just came in and decided to invest and start living here I looked around for entrepreneurs organization and they had no chapter in East Africa or in the West Africa. So I put up my hand and I started the movement on the continent. So today, looking back, we are, we got about seven chapters on the continent. And not only that, when I heard about the B corporation and I just, when my company got certified, I started socializing about this within the group, being a member leader, being on a couple of global committees as a volunteer, I had an opportunity to start influencing. Uh, to cut the long story short, today there is a group of over 1,000 plus entrepreneur members across the globe uh, as part of an external engagement group. We are all collectively working towards socializing the B Corp movement and trying to encourage some of our own companies and also the customers to start being part of this. So this is a collective movement happening. Uh, it's taken almost a year plus, but you would see traction happening in 2021. But that's that's the reason why I'm sharing this story is all of us in our own little way have influence in some form or the other on other communities beyond our respective businesses. Maybe the point I wanted to really call out is if we can look out for those communities where we can see the idea, influence, and genuinely share our own story, I'm sure more and more large, mid and small companies would be part of this moment and can benefit from here. I think I liked what Shazi was saying earlier about how any startup now, this should be the, the baseline legal requirement to begin trading. You know, I don't, I don't think we have time for people to start new and new businesses that are also exploitative and destroy the environment. So you, you should almost, when you go, when you get it, you know, I don't, I know that you can just set up a company, but wouldn't it be fascinating if you had to get a business license and that required you to go through the B lab assessment and it required you to prove, you know, what your, what your intentions were. So, you know, where I see it, where I see it in the future is that 
is that, you know, I see a funnel of where businesses have to go if we're going to survive as a civilization. And all businesses will have to behave as we do. And even the businesses that are already B Corps will have to be so much better. And that's what I, I really love about the movement is that every time you recertify, you have to improve. We can't, we can't achieve a minimum level of goodness and then park there. We have to improve. We're all on a, we're all on a journey and none of us is perfect, but we are all aiming, <laughs> we're all aiming very high. I think that to the future, if I see how it's going to evolve, I hope that we are going to change the industry. And um, I think we have to get out of the bubble. And we talk, I talk a lot about what the examples I was giving, no, any brand is like the known or nor any brand. And I speak because we have also a movement at Dopper. I speak companies that they think that it's so difficult to become a big corp that they don't even start. And I tell them, yeah, okay, every day you don't do it. It's a day that maybe you are doing the things not on the right way. So just get it started. And, you know, and so I think that the impact will be when we reach not only the small organizations, but when we can, maybe we should have like an assignment to bring another organization, which is big to the movement so that maybe it's part of the reg registration. I don't know, but I think then we are making bigger skill and I think we are all here with the right heart and we are doing the good things that we have to make go out of the bubble. And we, I speak with a lot of companies when I say B Corp, they think, oh my God, how did you do that? The, the big organizations, the small organizations, they get it done. The big organizations, they are afraid to make this bigger change. And yeah. I think we should aim for it and not only be happy with our own points. I mean, I wanna have 150, but I better have that a big company have 80 or 70 is better than my 150. So that day that we start thinking, oh, let's get all of them at least <laughs> doing kind of things right, then I think the world will change. So I don't wanna make my company only the better place. I wanna make the world a better place. So we should be involved in the world outside the community. It should be part of our job. I, I feel um, that we have a responsibility. Yeah, just talking about Hannah's point, it I'm not too sure how things are evolving, but I know some of the states in the US and some countries have come out with the legislation that you can now become a benefits corporation. I, I don't know what is it called the language wise, but fundamentally you get a special benefit in terms of taxation, special benefit in terms of a status. And I only hope that if we can get that movement going in other parts of the world, that can also incentivize and attract some of these larger enterprises who may look at it more from a commercial point of view, can I save some tax? But at least the thought process would come into their heads and start thinking about it. So that's one. The second thing is uh, the UN SDG Action Manager is again a fantastic initiative, um, I think between uh, UN SDGs and B Corp. Uh, the SDG action manager or something, again, I may not have gotten the terminology right, but fundamentally it's a great tool, irrespective of whether the companies certify themselves or not. Even if they just start the process, go through the journey, it's a great benchmarking. Uh, Fernanda, you asked about, are there any other benchmarks that you have? So one of the things I do, uh, let me see if I can grab my card. This is my business card. And the back of my card is the big B. Ah, okay. And I actually give my card like this, not this way. Mm -hmm. I actually give my business card this way to people. They, they just look at it and say, what is this B? And that's a conversation starter. Ah, okay. In any case, I mean, who needs my details and others? In any case, if they want to know me, reach me, they will. But a business card, as small as a business card, it can be an instrument of change. And you can also use this as a conversation starter. And that's actually triggers. I think in the last, I mean, off late, I've not been meeting a lot of people in person, but if I think of 2019 and early part of 2020, at least 80% of my meeting conversation starter was around B Corp. 
I mean, that's a great way to start the conversation and people get, oh, I see. So what is this? I never heard of this. And then you know, start talking through that. And then you say, hey, by the way, this is where we are. This is how we do. And the best way to tell is a show and tell game, right? So you just make them understand. And if they connect with you, they connect with you. If not, it's okay. The key three key points that I wanted to mention is one is a conversation starter. And the second is I'm nudging a lot of startups to large enterprises and mid-sized companies to start the process of going through the beak of certification. I mean, whether you get certified or not, just the process would give you an idea of where your business stand versus, I mean, I don't know if BCOP uh, is, uh, is this allowed to say or not, but I'm, I'm telling people out there that, you know, this is a great way for you to benchmark and understand where, you, where your business at large stands against all the global companies. Just, just a cheeky idea. I don't know what you all think about it. Is there a way we can introduce a topic in the school curriculum around the B Corp movement? Actually, we, we know that this is um, unbelievably successful. We're, we're also a social enterprise like, like you are, Sri. And we had a, a group of teachers came from South Korea and they had a social enterprise module that they were developing for their students. And they talk about us as a, as a case study, as a social enterprise and as a B Corp. And now every summer we get emails from Korean students asking us if they can interview us for a report or, or you know, learn more about it. And then very bizarrely, our sales started to really, really creep up in South Korea. So the impact it has on students is huge because the questions we get from them in these interviews are, how do you start a business like this? How do I find a business like this that I can work for? What kind of skills does a B Corp need and how will they hire? So I completely agree with you. Um, it, it definitely needs to be a part of the education system. You know, if you think about what, what, if I think about what I learned in school, I didn't learn how businesses worked. I didn't learn yeah. about actually how utilities worked, how landfill, uh, I didn't learn about landfill. I didn't learn about how society is structured. And, and I think all of those things um, certainly certainly can revolve around the B Corp story in the same way you were saying, we're not for business, we're not, we're not government, we're not charity. We are this four thing that covers everything. But yeah, schools are, are, are a brilliant place to start. Absolutely. Um, and uh, I keep getting, uh, uh, sorry, if I can just complete this thought. Please. I keep getting a lot of requests from of parents, uh, the kids doing the school assignments out of US. And they want to do something with something in Africa. They're not able to define that something. Sometimes they're clear, sometimes they're not. But they want to do something which is Africa. Now, for most of them, Africa means they have already preconceived notions. But we can actually change the narrative and then say there are better businesses, there are better ways of doing things, and this is what is happening. And maybe, I don't know how we can actually uh, chat up with our respective uh, B Corp officers locally or something could be done uh, internationally. But but the key is if we can get some of our, like uh, Chrissy, you, you have a fabulous story and interesting to see that your sales are also like kicking up from South Korea. But is, is there a way we can actually put a kind of a storybook or put a kind of some of these case studies together? And the theme here is facts tell, but stories sell. We can say there are 3,000 businesses, B Corp, that's great. But a story, just what you just share right now, sells. And it is extremely important, as important as we are trying to think of bringing the large enterprises into this moment, it's also important to get the fresh minds, young minds into this moment. Because they are the future leaders and they are the real change makers of the future. And is there a way we can positively influence them see the idea of what are the possibilities. I'm, I'm, if, if, they're, if they're growing up with that kind of a belief system, when they grow up, that's what they start doing it. And that's a natural cascade into startup movement, Chrissy. Again, a great idea from your side. Yes, is there a way we can actually create startups? See, this is fun fundamentally, again, a, a secret, a very personal secret is when I looked at this entire uh, big Corp thing, I told my human resource team, why don't you just scrap what we have, 
make a company policy just around this. It's actually a playbook. And as a small company, we can afford to do some of these changes, but if somebody is starting, and this can actually be a great playbook for starting a business, and all you got to do is to check, 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 check. And it's easy when you are small and easy when you're starting small, so you can start thinking big. The real ask is spread the word, tell the story. Okay, uh, of course, you can always ask for something materialistic, but I personally believe that it is the story that sells. It's the moment. And it's important that we share these stories within our networks and magic happens. Yeah, that's, that's my take. Yeah, my take is not different. It's visibility. We need to be visible. We need to be able to share our story and to share our dreams and what we are able to make here happen. But we need people. This is, a, it is all about connection. It's about changing ideas, changing actions. It's visibility. If I can so resume in one single word, it's visibility. I think sometimes also it's easier to share other people's stories. So Virginia and I have met and when we met, she gave me a Dopper bottle that has my, my name on it. And I took that bottle to Canada where I was doing some lectures at various universities in the West Coast. And I always had it with me. And I have, I have told, I told the story in Western Canada probably about you know, 200 times, whether that be to students in the line at a, you know, to, to get hot water, to fill it, fill it up at a tap, you know, wherever the case may be because I had it very powerfully in my hand at the time. So I think actually that is another thing that we can do collectively for each other is that sometimes it's hard to talk about how great you are, but it's much easier to talk about how great other people are. That's true. Yeah, I think that's really amazing. I hope I can send backpacks to all of you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but on a serious note, what this would actually do is one is influence and second is attract the right talent. That's I think the biggest challenge that I see right now is uh, ability to attract the right talent and people who have the same uh, values and ethos and you know belief system as we all believe in doing it. And we, let's accept it. We can only do so much as founders. The real heavy lifters are the people who will follow us. And if those followers are following the same belief system that we have built our lives around, I think that's actually going to take us far. It was such a nice conversation. Thank you guys um, for inspiring me. And I hope we all stay connected and... Uh... And yeah, keep feed, fighting the good fight. This is, um, is, is a really nice way to start my day on this side of the world. So really <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thank nice you. Nice meeting you. Uh, all right. Nice meeting you all. Thank you so much. Nice Have a wonderful day. Nice to visit you, Sri, in like two years. Yes, absolutely. Those are welcome. All of you, please do visit us. See you. Bye. Bye.